everyone welcome to this tutorial in which we are going to discuss a very simple problem which is product of array except self so we will first start with the understanding the problem statement then we will look uh, into the various sample cases to understand the input and the output format then we are going to discuss the various approaches uh, of solving this problem and finally we are going to code each of these approaches and uh, find out the most optimal solution for the same. So let's get started. So the problem statement is given an array nums of n integers where n is greater than 1, we need to return an array output such that output i which is index of uh, i is equal to the product of all the elements of nums except num i. So this is the uh, actual problem statement but now I am to I am going to explain you various sample cases to for uh, to develop better understanding for the same. So suppose our uh, input is input array is 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the output should be 24, 12, 8, 6. So how is this output getting generated? For suppose output of i, which is output at 0 index, is the product of all the elements except uh, the element at that index. So for first and uh, for 0th index, the product is 2 into 3 into 4 which is 24. The, the output at first index is product of all the elements except the element at first index which is 1 into 3 into 4 which is 12. Similarly for the second index the product is 4 into 2 into 1 which is 8 and finally for the fourth index which is the uh, i equals to 3 the product is 1 into 2 into 3 which is 6. Similarly 1 2 0 4 is the input then the output would be uh, for uh, zeroth index 2 into 0 into 4 0 similarly 0 8 0 and finally if the input is 0 2 0 4 the output will be all zeros why so because whenever we are considering at any index the product will be consisting of at least one zero and hence the output would be all zero so looking at this pattern we can draw certain conclusions like for suppose if there are no zeros present then the product would be simply uh, the product uh, the output array would simply be the product of all the elements divided by the array element at that index so let's check it here so suppose we want to find the output of one output at index one which is for this element so it would be one into two into three into four which is 24 divided by two which is 12 so hence we can conclude that this logic is getting followed because we know that product of all the elements divided by that particular element would give us the product of all the elements except that particular element. Now if there is 0 is occurring only once as in this case so we can see that uh, this 0 will be appearing in all of the products except for the product at this particular index. So while uh, calculating the output for this element, we will be getting one zero and hence the product will be zero. As even if there is a single zero, the product would always be zero. So only when the product is being calculated for this index, for the zeroth, will not be taking this zero and hence the product would be the product of all the elements except this zero. So that's why eight. And for the last case, when zero is occurring two or more number of times, so uh, for this the output will be all zeros why so because whenever we are considering a particular element at least one zero will be present there which will turn out the entire product to zero so uh, let's discuss the various approaches so first approach is to take two loops the outer loop to access the element at given index and the inner loop to access all the elements except the current element which is take the product of all these elements except the outer element and just return this output array. Let's code this program. So void find product which will take an input array vector of int and nums this. We'll call a function from the main method. So write it down int main uh, return zero and we will call it with the sample input so let's call it find pro uh, let's call it with one comma two comma three comma four okay and just write uh, now we'll just write the first uh, approach here 
so as i told earlier we'll take two loops so let's define the first loop for int i equals to 0 i is less than n i plus plus so what is n here n is the number of elements so let's define it int n equals to nums dot size now this is the outer loop now the inner loop for int j equals to 0 j is less than n j plus plus so now what we are going to do is we are going to discuss uh, we are going to define a product uh, product variable to to store the product of all the elements except the element at the ith index so let's define it int row equals to 1 as product should always be initialized to 1 in order to ca uh, calculate the actual product otherwise it will turn the product to 0 if initialized with 0 so yeah so we'll do pro equals to pro into nums of j so one condition is needed here as we don't have to consider the element at the given index so we'll put one condition if condition if i is not equals to j then only we need to calculate this product we are just doing what is asked to be done and uh, we'll simply check out the product here see out product here. Okay, so let's run this code. Yeah, so as you can see, the output is uh, the output is as per required. So for first index, we are getting the product of two into three into four, which is twenty four. For second, we are getting twelve, eight, and six. So yeah, but as told earlier, this approach is order of n square because we are making use of two loops. So one way we can optimize this is uh, by making use of the second approach, which we have discussed earlier, which is by counting the number of zeros in involved in the calculation. So what we're going to do is we'll first count the number of zeros in the array. If these zeros are greater than or equal to two, then we'll return an array full of zeros because uh, at least one zero will be present while be taking the product of the remaining elements. If these, num uh, if these number of zeros is equal to 1, then we'll return an array full of zeros except for the index at which 0 is present, which will be the product of the remaining elements as discussed. And last case, if the number of zeros is 0, that is 0 is not present, then we'll first compute the product of all the elements and then at each index, we'll keep dividing this product with the element at current index to get the element at the resultant array. So let's write a program for the same. I'm just going to edit this code only. So yeah, so I'll write the code for the second approach. Int i equals to zero. Int j equals to nums dot size to get the number of elements present. These are just random variables that we are going to use in the upcoming code. So I'll explain as and when required. So yeah, first we'll uh, find out the product of all the elements. So while i is not equals to j, that is we are not reaching out to the end of the array. p into equals to nums of i. That is the product of all the elements. If of um, so if uh, any of the array element is zero we'll just increment c which is the count of zeros and we'll store this particular index in the variable k because we'll need this while finding the product of the remaining elements for the case where number of zeros is one as discussed in the approach slide. So 
so yeah and just increment i for each of these cases now let's initialize i again to zero so we'll write the three cases here if number of zeros are greater than sorry greater than or equals to two in that case all the elements would be initialized uh, all the elements of the output array would be zero so if i is not equals to, while i is not equals to j nums of i equals to zero we are setting the given array to all the zeros and hence we are not making use of any extra space here because uh, the given elements are not much required so we'll modify the same array so else if count of zeros is one in that case uh, equals to zero one. In that case, we need to find the product of all the remaining elements and put it at the place where that zero is present. So, well, i is not equals to j. I is not equals to k. So this condition checks for the index at which zero was present. So if that index is not k, we'll calculate the product for the remaining elements. Increment the loop. And once calculated the product, we will set the elements for the final array, which is the output to be presented. So again, initialize i to 0 to start from the beginning. While i is not equal to j to iterate over all the indices. If i equals equals to k. This is the case for the index where zero is present. So for this particular element, we'll set the output to the product of all the elements except that zero. Else, as discussed, we are going to set the elements to zero. And increment the loop. So we have covered the second case as well. And finally, the third case where number of zeros are when zeros are not present, that is number of zeros equals to zero. Why this error? Okay, this should be inside. Yeah, and finally the third case where the number of zeros are zero. So else we are going to set the output at each index to the product of all the elements divided by the element at that index as discussed in the second approach. So we'll loop through all the elements while i is not equals to j that is we don't reach the end of the array nums of i equals to p divided by nums of i so your p is the product of all the elements and we are dividing that product with the element present at that index this gives us the output at that index and i plus plus incrementing the loop Yeah, that's it. So we are going to print the output to check our result. Compiled successfully. Yeah. As you can see, the output is same as that, as that got for the first approach. So this code you can get access 
afterwards to the link provided in the slides and the material. So I hope that you have understood this approach. Thanks for watching.